be fine, Edward. Where is he? <gasps> Where's my damn money? the only thing you'll catch tonight. my fault. He made me control Superman. What's his name? He calls himself Hush. The events of the past months reach as high as Superman and as low as the Joker. All were set into motion by Hush. <laughs> Is it too much to ask for one quiet weekend? It's like they're all crawling out from under the carpets now. <laughs> Hush knows me. He's been one step ahead of me the whole time. Tick tock, trails going cold. This just gets better and better. Hi everyone, happy Comic-Con week. If you guys didn't see, they dropped Batman Hush while all the craziness was going on. We also have a really big update on the Robert Pattinson Batman movie that Matt Reeves is making. I'll talk about that after I talk about Batman Hush, one of the best Batman comic book stories of all time. You would think them doing an animated movie of it would be an easy slam dunk. So we'll break it all down and some of the comic book changes. There were some small changes and some really big changes. So I will say spoiler warning when I get to that part. We'll be doing IMAX ticket giveaways all week long. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Batman moment on the video. This is all obviously borrowing from the Batman Hush comic book storyline with changes made because it's within the Justice League War continuity. So this is all taking place after the events of the death of Superman then the reign of the Superman movies. If you guys didn't see it, they also dropped an extended preview on Justice League vs. The Fatal Five because they've been releasing a whole bunch of animated movies this year. But the Justice League vs. The Fatal Five movie is Bruce Timm from Batman the Animated Series and his crew like Kevin Conroy, that group of people. So that's why the animation style looks so different. And this is drawn to look more like the Justice League war films, the animation style they developed for that. I'm not as big a fan of that animation style as I am of Bruce Timm's, but Warner Brothers animation generally does really, really good work. Warner Brothers animated movies tend to be some of the best DC movies you will ever wind up seeing. 
But even if you haven't read the Batman Hush storyline, everyone in creation at least knows a little bit about the story, so a lot of this should feel familiar, albeit with a few changes that they made. There are a couple of characters that were not in the comic book story. Like Damian Wayne is a big addition to this because he exists within the Justice League War continuity. He's been a character, and they try to put him in pretty much every single animated Batman movie that they do. Mostly because Damian Wayne is super popular with their younger audience, and that's where most of this animation stuff is geared towards. But in the comics, Grant Morrison didn't create the Damian Wayne character till about three years after they published the Batman Hush comic book storyline. The comic book is over 15 years old, so I feel like we don't really need a spoiler warning for that comic book. But the character Hush, Thomas Elliot, is someone from Bruce Wayne's past that grew up with him, that blames him for all these terrible things that happened to his life. So he wants to make Batman suffer. He finds out that Batman is Bruce Wayne, so he systematically goes about pitting Batman against all of his biggest villains. That was one of the coolest things about the Batman Hush comic book, is that it wasn't just this dark person from his past coming back to fight him. It was this dark villain from his past coming back to set him against all of his darkest villains to tear him down systematically until he could eventually just take his life from him and become Bruce Wayne. Literally because Thomas Elliot surgically alters his face so that it looks exactly like a copy of Bruce Wayne's. That's why he has the bandages on his head because it's post-surgery. But Jim Lee and Jeff Loeb wanted that big WTF moment at the end of the story where he unwraps the bandages and you see Bruce Wayne's face. Oh my god, it's Bruce Wayne. No, wait, it's Thomas Elliot wearing Bruce Wayne's face trying to take his identity. Most of you will also probably remember that one of the coolest things about that story towards the end is that they also set up Batman Under the Red Hood because he finds Jason Todd's grave is empty and then it sort of sets the stage for Jason Todd to return as the Red Hood character. So you have this long series of villains from Batman's past coming back, making him atone for what they consider his sins to be. Like, you did all these terrible things, we're going to make you suffer for all the wrongs you visited on us. So that's where you're basically going to see pretty much every big Batman villain show up during this movie. I will say spoiler warning talking about the Riddler stuff because he was one of the biggest character changes that they made to the original comic book story. The Riddler already had a really important role in the original comic book Hush storyline, but the movie tries to make him a way, way bigger character than he was in the comic book, so be prepared for that. Your enjoyment of the film just depends on how much you enjoy these DC films. So if you've liked the animated films since they started the Justice League War continuity, you'll probably enjoy this because it's just a continuation of those characters with them adapting the Batman Hush comic book. But they have not announced any kind of Batman Under the Red Hood noob movie. The only other rumor about the next big Batman movie is that at some point they're going to do Batman The Long Halloween. And cool side note about The Long Halloween storyline, because it's also one of the best Batman comic book stories of all time, is that supposedly Matt Reeves used some of that as the basis for his Batman movie that he's doing with Robert Pattinson. There's no big DC movie panel happening this weekend, but the rumor is that Vanessa Kirby is going to be Selina Kyle Catwoman in the Matt Reeves Batman film. She's done a pretty fantastic job in the stuff that she's been in so far, the drama stuff, the big action stuff. So I am intrigued. Hopefully we'll get a costume reveal at some point or at least a costume reveal for Robert Pattinson's new Batman costume. Because right now they're saying that it's supposed to be set sometime during the 90s, so it's almost a prequel of sorts to the modern Batman films. So I'm expecting a much more pared down version of the more armored Batman suits that we've seen with the last couple of iterations. Like even Christian Bale's Batman suit wound up getting pretty armored up by Dark Knight Rises. All the Wonder Woman 1984 trailers, the Birds of Prey trailers will drop a little bit later this year. Batman himself is going to be a character on Titan Season 2 amongst many other new characters. Deathstroke, Ravager, Rose Wilson, Jericho, Superboy, Crypto, a whole bunch of other people. There's a rumor that they're going to drop that trailer in the next couple of days because Titan Season 2 premieres September 6th, so it's almost a month away. So of course we're going to get the trailer really soon. I'll do Easter egg videos for that as soon as it drops, but also in the DC Universe, the Watchmen HBO TV show is coming later this year. I'll be doing episode videos for that too. I've already done a trailer video explaining what the continuity is, what the timeline is. You can click here to watch that and click here for my Marvel Phase 4 Comic-Con panel with all those movies they just announced. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.